Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the University of Northampton's November graduation ceremonies. Whoop, whoop, yep. Feel free. <laughs> The ceremony is about to begin, so please ensure you turn your mobile phone to silent. And if you wish to film the ceremony uh, or take photographs, please remain in your seat and be considerate of the people sitting around you. Graduating students, a commemorative photograph will be taken as you cross the stage and meet with our presiding officer. Please pause to allow your photograph to be taken. Congratulations on your achievements, and I wish you all the very best. Enjoy the ceremony and enjoy the day. Now, could you please be upstanding for the procession? Thank you. Very good afternoon, everyone. By the authority of the Board of Governors and Senate, I declare open this congregation for the conferment of an honorary doctorate and academic awards. Would you please sit down? Well, it was a filthy morning, but the sun has come out, and we're delighted to welcome you to the Derngut here in Northampton. We give you our very warmest welcome to celebrate the graduating class of 2022. We cannot, of course, ignore the difficulties of the two and a half years just gone by, which have been very challenging for us all. And I'm pleased to see so many of you are able to join us in celebrating the success of our graduates. This afternoon, specifically, we're celebrating graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education and Society. And I would like to invite Dr. Jacob Saranga to deliver an address. Jacob. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Jacob Saranga, and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Health, Education and Society. I'm delighted to see so many of you here and deliver a speech to the graduating class and the guests, wherever they are, in the theater here in Northampton, at Waterside Campus in the Learning Hub, or worldwide. 
Each of you graduating will have faced challenges on the journey to completing your qualification. With support of your family, friends, and academic and professional staff at the university, you will have overcome these challenges through flexibility, resilience, and determination. These and other attributes you have developed during your studies prepare you well for your future, whether you enter the world of work or return to us to complete further studies. In the past, there have been some excellent examples of students and staff going above and beyond their work and studies. I could not be prouder of every single one of you who has acted as change maker, either at the university by supporting the student body as a student representative or in the wider community. This year, the university renewed its partnership with St. Andrew's Healthcare, which is based in Northampton. This partnership has been in place since 2010, and we have worked collaboratively on a variety of education programs. This includes an Andrews Healthcare Exciting Aspire program, which supports healthcare assistance from the charity to complete a mental health or learning disability nursing degree at the university in just two years, while receiving financial and pastoral support. Since 2010, 108 healthcare assistants have qualified through this route. In addition, university students regularly undertake placement at St. Andrews to gain experience in working with patient, psychiatric setting, etc. Since May 2015, 1,079 placements have been taken place, featuring 697 students across 12 different undergraduate and postgraduate programs, including health professions, nursing, and social care. I would like to take this opportunity to thank St. Andrews Healthcare and all those organizations across the clinical and education setting which have provided support to our students in the past year and in previous years. The opportunity to gain real life experiences which consolidates learning, which has taken place in the classroom, is vital to students' success in the studies and into their careers. Many of the students graduating today will have been supporting their local community in health, education, or the social sciences during the COVID-19 pandemic. Your support has not been unnoticed by the university or wider society, so thank you very much for your hard work and endeavors. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues from across the faculty, some of whom have joined me on the stage today, who have been supporting students during their studies. I am sure the graduates will join me in thanking you for your hard work and dedication which has allowed them to succeed in their study. So thank you. <laughs> For those of you who have completed your qualification, this is a formal welcome to the Alumni Association. The university's support for our alumni is simple and we are proud of it. We will offer you help and support for your entire working life, not just for a few years after graduation. So if getting a foot on the career ladder is top priority for you right now, we are here for you. We are also on hand to help you stay in contact with your classmates or staff through our international community of the University of Northampton graduates. Our alumni social media channels are a great way to keep in touch with your classmates and to stay up to date with ongoing at the university. To end, I know you have, have had new experiences, opportunities, and much inspiration during your studies. Whatever the future holds for you, whether it's embarking on future study or entering or returning to the world of work, on behalf of my colleagues in the Faculty of Health, Education, and Society, May I wish you every success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jacob. I'm now going to call upon Aidan Ward to present the honorary doctor. Chancellor, insofar as the Board of Governors and Senate of the University have seen fit to establish honorary doctorates to confer on eminent individuals, I today present Dr. John Hare, on whom the Board of Governors and Senate have determined to confer such an award.
The adage that we used to teach, well, teach is hard to hard, so it's either the teeth to the bone or soft yeah. to soft, the corner of the mouth to the corner of the ear. Yeah, you, t you do tend to tilt, away, uh, tilt towards your hand. So yeah. what you try to do, is you, the further you get your fingers, so if that's the midline of the mask, yeah. if you get your fingers over the midline of the mask okay. and then you claw your hand, you tend to claw it all in one. Oh, yeah, it keeps and you, it more And central. it keeps it more central and you yeah. get a better seal. Yeah. Okay. I'm privileged to be sitting in front of the ambulance simulator in the skills lab at the University of Northampton where the Department of Paramedic Science has been an important part of my career. My childhood was spent in a town called Chessent in Hertfordshire. My father was a constable in the Metropolitan Police Force. He was based in North London and my mother was a clerk in the accounts department at Lotus Cars where they had the factory in Chessent at the time. I have uh, two siblings, a brother who spent a career as a firefighter and is still working for the fire service in Hertfordshire. His name is David. And I have a sister called Karen who works in the pharmaceutical industry as a production planner. I went to school in Chessent, to Chessent School, which is a comprehensive school. And I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed my school years. I enjoyed learning and it was the enthusiasm of my teachers, particularly in the sciences, biology, chemistry and physics, that led me to follow the career that I've chosen. I also enjoyed playing rugby and athletics and generally sport in general. For many years I actually wanted to be a vet and a chap called James Herriot wrote his series of books and there were films produced which made getting into that career even harder and I didn't get in so I opted for medicine instead. I started my medical career at the Royal Free Hospital in 1981 the Royal Free Hospital was the first hospital in the UK to take women students and prior to 19, the late 1940s it was purely a female intake. That's not why I went there, after the 1940s the intake became partially male as well. I qualified in 1986 and did a year as a house officer where we worked long hours, often over 70 hours a week our weekends on call started on a Friday morning and finished on Monday night and there was little sleep to be had at the time. So the career is much different then to what it has been today. After a year as a house officer I went into a job as a casualty officer at Wexham Park Hospital Slough in their emergency department under the guidance of a lady called Miss Sheila Christian. She was a real enthusiast for a career in accident and emergency one of the first women consultants in the emergency department and she was a great mentor to me. She encouraged me to go on a course that had just come to the UK at the time called the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Course. When I came back to the department after the course I found myself in the role of assessing ambulance technicians that were doing extended training in their skills in CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. This was my first encounter with ambulance crews as an educator. I passed my exams for the Fellowship of the Royal College of Anaesthetists and gained a certificate of completion of specialist training in the late 90s. And then in the year 2000, I was appointed as a consultant in anaesthesia and critical care at Northampton General Hospital. Shortly after my appointment, I was asked to take on the lead for paramedic education, which I was really pleased to do. It was rewarding to see the students develop in their professionalism and their, to see their confidence grow as their skill set improved and to be able to sign them off at the end of their placements was a real honour. My greatest career achievement was probably being appointed as a consultant in anaesthesia and critical care at Northampton General Hospital and going on to chair the Central England Trauma Network Medical Management Group. Working with paramedic students at the university has been an absolute privilege. I'm very well aware that when they come into my environment it's completely alien to them and they feel out of their comfort zone. But coming to see them in the university and to teach in the university has put me slightly out of my comfort zone but has really increased my rapport with the students for when they came into theatre. The facilities at the university are superb 
the ambulance simulator is here. The University was actually one of the first universities to have an ambulance simulator in the UK, thanks to the foresight of its tutors and the educators within the department. The skills labs are a great way to learn and to come and teach in this environment has been an absolute privilege. When I received the letter from the university offering me an honorary doctorate, I was absolutely surprised. I felt very humbled to have the recognition for the education that I'd helped provide to the paramedics, but I felt really that it was more of an honour to have worked beside such a great crew of educators in the university setting. So words of wisdom for graduating students. I think the best thing you can do in life is to treat people as you would wish to be treated. If you keep things simple and do the basics well, everything else tends to go well. Congratulations on your qualification. I hope you have a great career and I wish you all the very best. Mr Adidapo, in accordance with the decision of the Board of Governors and Senate, I present to you Dr John Hare, that you may confer an honorary doctorate. John Hare, by the authority of the Board of Governors and Senate, I confer upon you an honorary doctorate, and I welcome you to the university. Thank you. <laughs> Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Deputy Lieutenant, University staff, graduates and their guests, I'm really thankful for the honour bestowed upon me today. Huge congratulations to all of you graduating today. Graduation is a major milestone in anyone's life and I feel privileged that I've been allow allowed to share your special day. You've all worked incredibly hard to get here and you should be proud of your achievement. Your achievements are even more notable considering the limitations imposed by the COVID pandemic, which has affected not only your campus life, but your placements inside and outside of the classroom, your families and your friends as well. If I may, graduates, I would like to take a moment to thank on your behalf all the folks who have supported you to get here too, your families and friends, and also your tutors for steering you through your course in these difficult circumstances. Thank you so much, very much to all of them. I look back and see how much I really appreciate everything my parents, siblings, wife, children, friends, teachers and colleagues did for me at various stages of my career. A few of them are here today, which is a very special occasion for me. I'm sure your support network will continue to be there for you too, as your new venture begins and your careers progress. So thank you once again to them on your behalf for all their encouragement to date and in the future. Now you have qualified, many of you are about to embark on a career in healthcare. Some of you will go on to further studies now or in the future. Whichever the path you follow, in many ways, your learning is about to start all over again. A phrase that is used on many occasions in our environment is, every day is a school day. Certainly in my own career as an anaesthetist, I found I learned something every day. Sure, I had to learn information and gain knowledge to pass various professional exams, but not everything I learned came from books. I learned from the people around me in, current, in different specialties, whether they were doctors, nurses, paramedics, podiatrists, or other healthcare professionals and workers. I learned from people from different backgrounds, with different beliefs, and with different ways of life. And I learned from the patients in my care. Most importantly, I learned that the one thing everyone we care for has in common is vulnerability. You are now in such an exciting place, both a responsible and a privileged position. You have been given some of the tools to help these vulnerable people and to make a massive difference to their lives. In turn, you'll have experiences through your work that will teach you more than any book and will shape and alter your lives. 
and these experiences will help you build upon your knowledge and skill set and really every day will be a school day. So once again I encourage you to treat people as you would wish to be treated both in your work lives and at home. Whatever you do will influence the lives of others and it will reward you in many ways. And actually you'll have a huge amount of fun along the way, make many fond memories and develop some lifelong special friendships. Whilst much of the press, care, press about health care provision today is not always good, the countless good things that go on daily are often not mentioned. Yet they, are, they far outweigh all the bad things. So go out there, be the best version of yourself that you can be, and be part of that unsung good. Once again, congratulations to all of you on your fantastic achievement. I wish you all the success in life you have worked for. Work hard, play hard, and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. And I now call upon Gail Forrester Gale to present the successful candidates from the Faculty of Health, Education and Society. Chancellor, as Associate Dean of the Faculty of Health, Education and Society, I present to you those candidates who have been awarded degrees, diplomas and certificates in the Master of Arts in Education. Mariatu Allen. and in the Master of Arts in Youth and Community Leadership, Shimbarashe Jambani. <laughs> Rachel, <laughs> Rachel Johnson. Bethany Mycock. <laughs> Sarah Nganjo. Deki Ogum Baide Monique Salvador Nalola Sikota. Lisa Thompson.
Chelsea Turney. And in the Master of Science in Advanced Clinical Practice, M.K. Kaufman. <laughs> Rianne Welch. Abigail Zavakaramba. <laughs> and in Master of Science in Child and Adolescent Mental Health, Kiran Tiwari. And in Master of Science in Counselling, Children and Young People, Tolulupe Osula. <laughs> Eleanor Suter. And in Master of Science in Public Health, Olajumoke Adekunle. <laughs> Abimefolua Agbede. Rita Aina Uragome. Aya Al Satouf. Jamaka Amadi. Omotayo Bancole. <laughs> Yatunde Bancole. <laughs> Kavya Baswana. Emanuela Boeke, Boeche. <laughs> Nyasha Chinyanganya. <laughs> Augustina Icarion. Asma Ilyas. <laughs> Gloria Isitor. <laughs> Shika Jabaharlal.
Josna John. Teo Kuku. Mary Jane Meir. Rafat Momot. Millicent Mupawenda. <laughs> Stephen Nyayale. <laughs> Ayobami Odu. Odifu Alexander Ocoli Oludotan Owalabi Arushi Sagotra. <laughs> Fuzea Said. <laughs> Rahana Sheikh. Esther Samade <laughs> Anjana Valsala And in uh, Master of Science in Specialist Community Public Health Nursing, Elisavette Petraki. <laughs> and Postgraduate Diploma in Education, Rosie McCarthy. Postgraduate Diploma in Youth and Community Leadership, Ruby Williams. Postgraduate Certificate, Dina Goddard. Postgraduate Certificate in Adult Critical Care, Hanan Alekeli. <laughs> Christina Arantz Tejo. <laughs> Lena Aravachen.
Sylvie Basil. Latina Scaria. Danielle Parker. Sabina Sunar. Postgraduate Certificate in Advanced Person-Centered Ophthalmic Care, Michelle Scott. Postgraduate Certificate in Special Educational Needs and Inclusion, Tia Sohi. <laughs> Postgraduate Certificate in Special Educational Needs Coordination, in brackets, the National Award for Special Educational Needs Coordination, Katie Guy. Molly Loke Smith. <laughs> Postgraduate Certificate in Transformational Leadership, <laughs> Melissa Beckford. Louise Hume. <laughs> Odette Yumup Yim Fukuza. <laughs> Susan Rogers. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Applied Social Care with Health Studies, Christiana Effa. Bachelor of Arts in Childhood and Youth, Gabriella Allam Chambers. <laughs> Kiara Thompson Gordon, Thomas Gordon, sorry. Thomas Gordon. Bachelor of Arts in Education Studies, Farzina Akhtar. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Learning and Teaching, Katie Nero. Bachelor of Arts in Psychology with Criminology, Samam Lama. <laughs> Alia Thomas. Bachelor, Bachelor of Arts in Social Work, Chinese in Seidu.
Bachelor of Arts in Sociology with International Development, Sabrina Indarigumiji. Bachelor of Arts in Sociology with Psychology, Nadia Deary. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Adult Nursing, Bukula Akande. Ruth A. Wannor. <laughs> Carly Bone. <laughs> Chloe Burgess. Juliet Chanza. <laughs> Fabienne Cooper. <laughs> Evelyn Darkwa Ocheri. <laughs> Jane Egwudu. Yeah. <laughs> Heather Forbes. Brogan Goth. Miranda Jane Gray. Nafisat Ishola. Katie Callow Wilkes <laughs> Eunice Kenyimbo <laughs> Charlotte Miles Shanten in Kube. <laughs> Tanya Radswa Nyakubaya. Sazini Nioni <laughs> Abibat Oluwu <laughs> Kimia Pals.
Rajani Putanengatu. Javeen Rao. <laughs> Red Shepherd. <laughs> Sharmila Sherma Limbu. Emma Tipping. <laughs> My Muna Toure. Janice Vigent. <laughs> Patricia Tufour Sarfo. <laughs> Halima Wasame. Eleanor Rag <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Children and Young People's Nursing, Emma Hall. <laughs> Christine Kilner. Bachelor of Science in Children's Nursing, winner of the University of Northampton Children and Young People Student of the Year Award, Natalie Eccles. <laughs> Terry Peasnell. Bachelor of Science in Enhancing Healthcare Practice, Richard Green. <laughs> Wendy Johnson. <laughs> Natasha Richards. Sharin Rubenza. <laughs> Bernadette Uzo. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Mental Health Nursing, Faith Abanane. Kwame Agiekum. <laughs> Phyllis Anthony. Bates.
Derek Benson. Lusalira Benson. Thomas Brown. Sampa Chanda. Ruth Chege. Lona Chinhara. <laughs> Eleanor Hewitson. Hope Iyangbe. Oluwafemi Joseph. Yonot Lucien Jerkin. Stacy King. Elizabeth Caruthi. <laughs> Rauf Lamidi. <laughs> Lugard. Omarogbe Okumbawa. <laughs> Roberta Nympha. <laughs> Akau Peterson. Mabel Plunge. <laughs> Joanna Ridlakowska. <laughs> Nicola Slade. Deborah Spence. <laughs> Miriam Stock. <laughs> Rhiannon Washford. Bachelor of Science in Midwifery, Rachel Beebe. <laughs> Maria Boothy. Maria. 
Bernice Campbell. Eleanor Collis. <laughs> Stephanie Davis. <laughs> Chloe Downey. Louisa Franklin. <laughs> Katie Garrard. <laughs> Rosie Jones. Rosemary Kennedy. <laughs> Winner of the Julie Quilter Award for Commitment to Midwifery Excellence, Maya Krosheva. Samantha Line. <laughs> Lois Logue. <laughs> Courtney McLeod. Lisa Moxham. <laughs> Poppy Ol <laughs> Sorry. Poppy Oliver. <laughs> um, uh, Amina Omar. Danielle Payne. <laughs> Ilana Preble. <laughs> Amy Richardson. Freya Richardson. Lisa Rigney. Emily Roberts. Rebecca Tabat. <laughs> Heather White. <laughs> Samantha Winkle. Bachelor of Science in Occupational Therapy, Stacey Chisiri. <laughs> Reuben James.
Bachelor of Science in Paramedic Science, Elise Chaffin. Emily Copson. Sean Davis. Talia Fisi. Lucy Ferguson. Alana Finlay. Kaylee Gardner. Ashley Jones. Keely Kramachuk Sewell. Bria McLaughlin. Benjamin Mellows. Fabienne Penuela Traub. Samuel Prince. Laura Roberts. Lewis Smart. <laughs> Bethany Swain. <laughs> Harry Tabara. Ryan Thompson. Lydia Winter. Bachelor of Science in Podiatry, Zara Chuthi. Bachelor of Science in Psychology, Lisa Harty. <laughs> Clemmy Kisuka. <laughs> Elizabeth Ojo Bede. Bachelor of Science in Psychology in Brackets Counseling, Tarif, Tarifikat Okasolo. <laughs> Margaret Salami. Foundation Degree Science in Dental Nursing, Asha Algali. <laughs> J. 
Jade Chance. Emanuela Ebosele Park. Sauron Ephraim. Queenster Osei. Nilima Rijal. <clears throat> Hena Shahid. <clears throat> Kisma Shitabe. Foundation Degree Science in Nursing Associate, Claudette Dans. <laughs> Leah Hackney. Foundation Degree Science in Paramedic Science, Callum Aikens. <laughs> Joanne Anderson. <laughs> Sarah Baker. Yunk Chung. Lynette Dawn. Helena Davis. Rebecca Dunn. <laughs> Louise Engeldow. <laughs> Sarah Hallam. Richard Henton. <laughs> Anita Hill. <laughs> Angela Ivanov. Andrew Johnson. Vance Kearney. Hannah Kemp. Chloe Law. <laughs> Mary Mather.
Thomas Mays. <laughs> Hannah Parker. <laughs> Thomas Richardson. David Cervante. <laughs> Teresa Shaw. <laughs> Matthew Snow. Rebecca Swan. <laughs> Elizabeth Nyarko. Chancellor, that concludes the presentation from the Faculty of Health, Education and Society. Thank you very much, Gail. And I would now like to invite Dio Adedapo to congratulate our graduates on behalf of the Board of Governors. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dio Adedapo. Thank you. <laughs> and I am a member of the university's Board of Governors. As you know, the university has embraced changemaker philosophy making it the cornerstone of all that we do. The Board of Governors, the university leadership team, our academic staff, and most importantly, you, our students, and our graduates have engaged with the Changemaker ethos and want to be Changemaker yourself. We and the Changemaker campuses all over the world are an example of a clear purpose, driving an organization to achieve long-term sustainable change. Being a change maker is by its very nature about the future. It's about making the world a better place. It is the core of what you as graduates will be doing, which is going out there, creating a better future for us all. I am confident that the university has provided you with the skills, experience, and support you need to be successful and to make the world a better place. On behalf of the Board of Governors, congratulations on your success and I wish you the very best for the next part of your journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dio, and I would now like to call upon Zoe Boyer to deliver the vote of thanks. As Vice President of the Students' Union, it is my privilege to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of the graduating class. Meeting here today fills me with pride as we celebrate each other's achievements, the result of many years of hard work and commitment. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all the staff at the university who have fueled our passion for knowledge, offered encouragement, and supported us every step of the way. Your dedication to our university experience has enabled us to meet our potential. Going to university isn't just about gaining a qualification, it's about the friends and memories we make along the way. We started at university as a group of strangers, but over the course of time studying here, we have learned and grown together, made lifelong friends and truly unforgettable memories. Most of all, on behalf of everyone joining today's celebration, I'd like to thank our families, friends and supporters. Thank you all for helping us to make the most of this fantastic opportunity which will enable us to realise our future aspirations. Your love and support has been incredible. 
So let us take this opportunity to celebrate the 2022 graduating class of the University of Northampton. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zoe. And before we formally close the ceremony, just uh, a few words. I was thinking all day, I've been here at uh, graduations all day, and it just of course reminded me of my own graduation, which took place, well, in another century, and uh, <laughs> in another place. And I was young and foolish, but a little less foolish after my degree, and a lot, well, you two will know exactly what's that like. And I was thinking, what's so special about Northampton? Why does it give me such joy, such pleasure as Chancellor to participate in the graduation ceremonies here. Well, there's all kinds of reasons for that. One is that I'm very conscious as a university of the critical role that we play in forming future thinkers, innovators, and leaders. We live, I don't need to tell you, in very challenging times. Those of you graduating today will know intimately what that's like, the effects of COVID-19, the restraints that's put on our learning and all our living and everything, and the challenges that leaves us with today in a world which is ever more challenging. And you are the generation, you are the people going forward who are going to have to tackle that. But you do that with the benefit of an education here, an education which encourages and stimulates and upholds your creativity, your imagination, and the distinctive uniqueness that is you, not lost in some kind of corporate endeavor, but always upheld because that's how it works. People come together and out of their uniqueness and their distinctiveness, they come up with new and innovative and brilliant ideas. And we're gonna need those because the challenges we're facing are indeed very serious. The other thing it reminds me of, funnily enough, is the World Cup. I don't know if you're a football fan as I am, but every time I watch it, I'm always fascinated to see how people from many nations gather together and celebrate the extraordinary festival of sport that that is. There's a World Cup coming up, as I'm sure you're aware. A World Cup not without controversy. Any gathering of that kind is going to be controversial. But I want to recall something that comes from another World Cup, and that is the World Cup of 1986. Those of you who were around to remember it, which is, well, probably none of you graduates, but most of us on the platform, will remember that that was the phenomenon that distinguished that World Cup. It wasn't the Vuvuzela, that was South Africa. It was the Mexican wave. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new Vice-Chancellor, Anne-Marie. It is the Vice-Chancellor's privilege to put something into our ceremonies that hasn't been put in before. <laughs> and it falls to me, as Chancellor, to preside at the University of Northampton Graduating ceremony, Mexican wave. <laughs> Those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, just look at the person on your right and do what they do. <laughs> We're going to start with you, OK? I'm going to point at you, and I'm going to point all the way around the auditorium and when you see my finger pointing at you, you know what you've got to do. Contestants, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Some noise. Amazing. <laughs> there are 11 ceremonies being held this week uh, to celebrate your graduations, and it's a very important part of the university's year. And of course, a huge rite of passage for you. It's again, it's very moving to hear your families come and support you. And I guess for lots of you, it's maybe the first person in your family who's graduated from university. And we're so pleased and proud that you've chosen us to celebrate with. 
The organisation that goes into this can't really be understated, so I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to join me in thanking colleagues from across the university for their incredible hard work in arranging this opportunity to come together today. We all have great confidence in the quality of your University of Northampton education and that the abilities you've cultivated studying here will stand you in good stead, whatever your chosen future path. Be proud of your achievement and be proud of your university because we are proud of you. Congratulations, enjoy the rest of the day and thank you. I now declare closed this congregation of the university. May the staff, the students and the graduates of the university prosper. Would you please stand? <laughs>